This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, it all kind of began with my little fixa- childhood fixation on Tracy Savage from Friday the 13th Part 3, and that is where I kind of discovered a little movie called The Bone Garden and its director, Mike Guttridge. And uh, that led to an interview with him, and that led to an interview with her. And since the Bone Garden is celebrating its five-year anniversary this year, I thought, you know what? I'm going to celebrate that film, because Lord knows how many really pathetic films come out five years ago that are going to get celebrated. So let's celebrate this little indie film for its five-year anniversary. I got a lovely lady on the phone who's been to man camp, which has a bone garden, and she's sitting on the phone with me right now. I give you the lovely, talented Tammy Cates. How do you do, Tammy? Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's it's wonderful having you, and I've I've heard so many nice things uh, about you from uh, Mike and from Tracy. And, oh, pshaw, pshaw. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, you have the Bone Garden celebrating its five-year anniversary. And, you know, I, I see a lot of junk get a wide theatrical release. And then you get these uh, smaller films that actually are really, really done well mm-hmm. that don't quite see the time of day. And, right. Uh, yeah. Right. Like, I'm, I'm right now a co-producer on 13 Fanboy. So, I mean, I'm hoping that gets respectable release. Mm-hmm. But, but I look at something like the Bone Garden. Uh, first off, I, I I love what Mike Guttridge did with the opening of the film. It's something I hope he continues with by using assistants to famous directors to. Uh, yeah, isn't do, that a smart idea? Really, a smart idea. He, yeah. he, he couldn't get John Waters, so he got his assistant. Yeah. <laughs> I Not only that, is Mike a really nice guy and extraordinarily talented but he's extraordinarily smart in terms of how he utilized and brought um talent and the appropriate talent into his film yes well before i start on the bone garden i'd I'd like to know a little bit about your background great um so i'm a third generation denverite and I grew up as a little kid doing theater. Well, I, I should hope you grew up as a little kid. <laughs> as a little kid, I grew up, I, I guess I said that backwards. As a little kid, I grew up doing theater. I actually um, saw, um, I was kind of precocious and was looking through the Denver Post and saw auditions for Peter Pan. And it was 10 miles away, and I rode my bike um, to the audition and got cast and called my mom to come pick me up and she's like where have you been this is before cell phones um so i grew up doing theater in denver and felt that that was really the only thing that i was supposed to ever be doing with my life and um even as even prior to doing that little play um i As a three-year-old, I guess I was directing plays in my backyard and selling tickets, giving people and neighbors a piece of paper, and that was their ticket to come see the plays. Um, But then I got my B.A. in theater, and I went to school in London at a professional acting school and then had to make a decision. Then I did one final play in um, Denver after the fall by Arthur Miller, and I had to decide whether to go to the East Coast or the West Coast. Um, In Denver at that time, there was really just community theater. There really wasn't professional theater and professional. And I felt passionate about um, pursuing acting professionally. And since I don't sing and I don't dance, I thought I better go to L.A. And I have for years. So um, and immediately got involved with theater companies started doing a lot of theater and small theater in LA and ultimately started working in front of the camera and um, have done um, I did more TV in the early in my career probably one of the bigger things I did was um, I did a season of Knott's Landing where they had to there were 10 episodes 
that they showed the younger version of all the series regulars to show how the relationships evolved, and I played the young Michelle Lee lookalike. Okay. I worked with uh, Nicolette Sheridan, who played the young uh, Michelle Phillips, and uh, Josh Devane played the young William Devane, and so they had um, lookalikes for, and so... Um, did that, and then I started getting involved in indie films as I was um, doing theater and raising a family, and um, there you go. <laughs> well, how, how did you come to meet Mike Guttridge? Well, that is <laughs> that is just one of these serendipity moments. So Tracy Savage and I, her... What her stepbrother, Harris Cow, when I moved out to L.A., I immediately uh, signed up for an acting class. And Harris was in the acting class, and Harris had been on Happy Days for five years. And, and Harris became like my best buddy. He was like my best friend in L.A. And through Harris, I got to know his family. And really well, and I got to know Tracy, and Tracy and I always hit it off, but as we got older, our children, um, Tracy's got a son, our children are not the same age, so I would only see Tracy, I mean, our paths only crossed when Harris was in town. Harris ultimately gave up his, the acting business and moved to Chicago and is a very, very successful event planner and has a company, and he's married with kids um, in Chicago. And when Harris would come to town, I'd see Tracy, and Tracy and I would gab, 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 gab. And then I wouldn't see her again until, like, the following year when Harris would come in town. And it never even occurred to Tracy and I to connect up outside of the connection through Harris. She was busy with her life and her career. I was busy with my life and my career. Wow. And Harris had come to town. Um, about six weeks prior to me receiving a phone call from Tracy. And so I had seen Tracy about six weeks before, so I guess I was fresh on her mind. So I was sitting in my house on reading a, a book, having some quiet time, reading a, no a novel on my iPad, and the phone rings, and it's Tracy, and she had never called me before. I had never called her before. And she said, listen, i got to cut to the chase. I have emailed you a script that's called The Bone Garden. You have one hour to read it then a director on the East Coast is going to call you. And I think you're perfect for this part. They have fired the woman who stars opposite me. It's a buddy-buddy film. The two leads are women, two best friends, and um, Mike's going to call you. And I, she said, so no chit-chat. Go, go to your office and, and read the script. So I read the script, and it felt, sometimes as an actor, you feel like when you read something, it's almost like a outfit you put on and you go this just feels perfect it's effortless i it's i don't have to do any tugging i don't have to do any alterations it just feels perfect and i read the script and i thought i totally can do this like this is so up my alley i totally w w outside of the fear of learning the lines overnight i mean i was in i'm in you know like you know, three quarters of the movie. So outside of learning the lines and, and, and the overwhelming amount of memorization I'd have to do in 48 hours, I thought, I can, I understand this character. And Mike called me and we chatted and I talked to him about how many indie, indie films I had done and how I'm kind of a team player that I've done probably more indie films and, and small theater um, than anything else. And um, Mike said, I'm sending you a plane ticket. Literally, it was, I think it was like on a Wednesday, and I, I had 48 hours to, the wardrobe person called me, I had to run to the store and buy a bunch of stuff, um, <laughs> and they flew me in, and I would, um, to Baltimore, and Tracy had already worked a couple months before shooting some, some scenes that were just her, and I was terrified, I mean, I was terrified of, of the amount of uh, memorization, but Tracy and I had such a um, great relationship and chemistry because we had gone back for so many years of being friends through her brother, through her stepbrother. Um, at, at night and in the morning, we would run lines. We had rooms right next to each other, and we just had fun. We'd take long walks. We mostly shot at night. So during the day, we'd take long walks and run lines and run lines. We broke the script down by scenes and the order that it was shot in, and we just really supported each other and helped one another. 
But I, I do have to say one of the most terrifying moments okay. was meeting Mike for the first time because I thought, what happens if he meets me and feels like he made a mistake? <laughs> and I was terrified. Like There's I was nothing disappointed. terrifying about Mike. <laughs> and he's the nicest guy. I just thought, what happens if he's disappointed? You know. But it just was. It just worked out so great. It was just wonderful. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, uh, I I really wanted to interview Tracy Savage uh-huh. so bad, and I was looking up, trying to find out how I could contact her, and I found the Bone Garden on there. I thought it was just somebody writing silly fan fiction uh-huh. because uh-huh. you had um, uh-huh. um, uh, Ron Milky as a cop who was a cop in the original Friday the 13th you have Paul Kratka and Tracy Savage that are both in part three and I'm like this is not real and of course I saw some pictures of Tracy and I was like is this a real film is this (laughs) this is for real so I kind of dug a little deeper and um I have I put contacting Tracy on the back burner and I kind of like I'll find out more about this. So I contacted Mike Guthridge, and uh, I remember one of the first questions he asked me was, uh, I don't know whether this was in the interview or on the phone before with the interview. He asked me how I come to know about his movie. <laughs> so I had to explain to him, I said, you're leading, <laughs> I have a big crush on your leading lady. And Yeah, she's a nice girl. I just saw her. She, we had a party last week, and she popped in. She came for a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's a really nice gal. And uh, she's had, you know, she's had three very successful careers. She was an actor, then she was a news anchor, broadcaster, and now she teaches journalism as a oh, college yeah. professor. I mean, she's had three really remarkable careers. I've only pursued acting. Um, and Tracy has had, Tracy's, yeah, Tracy's had, she, and she's just a lovely, lovely gal. Well, you know what? Um, I'm going to tell you, and this is something I'm always going to appreciate Mike Guthridge for. Uh, it was uh, Christmas 2017. Uh, it was the first, like, we got hit with a nasty snowstorm. So mm-hmm. my younger brother had cooked a, a dinner for my parents and I. And um, because of the snowstorm, he had to cancel it because the roads weren't fit to be on. Here I was home with just my cat, <laughs> snowstorm. Um, an actress friend of mine uh, gave me a call, which me a Merry Christmas, which was made my day. And then I get this message from Mike Guthridge saying, uh, Tracy will come on your show on Boxing Day. So all of a sudden, my uh, Christmas holiday turned out to be awesome. Oh, that's so, ex- you know, sometimes when the stars align like that, that's so great. I was um, this last spring... I kind of uh, was on my computer looking for work mm-hmm. and came across um, auditions for a movie that the description of the female lead sounded like it was describing me. <laughs> and so I went on IMDb Pro and I looked to see if anyone associated with the movie, the writers, producers, directors, to see if anyone had an email. And a lot of times on IMDb people list um, their contacts so that people can get in touch with them. And one of the, the writer producer had an email listed and I sent him a note and I said, you need to see me Mm -hmm. as opposed to, can I have an audition? I said, you, you need to see me. This is, you have described me. And they brought me in a week later. They were in town um, because they shot it in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And um, they were in town for casting the female lead in um, a comedy, a summer comedy called Man Camp. Mm -hmm. And um, I auditioned, and I had to do a funny scene and then a drama scene. My part is uh, I had, as a middle-aged woman, I got to do a very sexy scene. Tell tell me that that's not like a horror film sort of moment. But um, I had to do a sexy scene. I had to do comedy and drama. And um, they had me do a comedy scene to audition with and, and one of the uh, more serious scenes. And I guess I made the director cry. And I guess when I walked out of the room, the director just went, that's it. We have found her. And I found out I was cast. And it, But it wasn't going to shoot for a couple months. And I happened to be in New York with my husband. And I got a text from the producer, and I had already been cast. And they asked me if I watched Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which is a funny, funny sitcom that I'm a fan of and I watch 
And it turns out that one of the guys who's a series regular uh, loved the script and had just signed on to play my boyfriend. And it was kind of like one of those serendipity moments that you had, which is, you know, it was just perfect timing. The Mm -hmm. stars aligned. The stars aligned for you to ultimately talk and have a great conversation with Tracy, um, someone that you have, you know, pined away for years. And for me to have gotten cast in, uh, for me, the stars aligned on Man Camp, for me to have um, not only gotten cast in this, wonderfully written, really hysterical film that's that's hopefully coming out next summer. Um, but to play opposite Pete Gardner, who is in um, a show that I've watched since the beginning. So sometimes, you know, you put those that out in the, out into the universe, and the universe answers. Yes. Well, you know, <laughs> we're gonna, I'm going to get to band, band camp more detailed here momentarily because it does look interesting. But um, going back to Bone Garden here, um, I, I gotta say I, I enjoyed interviewing Tracy and had. Uh, um, I know I sent you that link and. Yeah, uh, I listened to both. I listened to the entire interview with Mike and the entire interview with Tracy. And not only did you do a good job, you did a great job. But they really, you really got it. The essence of of their soul and their character. They're just such such great people, and I love how. You know, when Mike started working um, as an editor, I think it was for NBC mm-hmm. in uh, in Washington, um, that he said to Tracy, someday I'm going to write a horror film, and if I do it, will you be in it? And she said, sure, Mike. And he did and let her know that he wrote a script, and this was, you know, years after they worked together, and she said, sure, Mike, I told you I would do it. <laughs> and there you have it. Yeah. I mean, you know, she's the they were there was that honor, you know, she was honorable to what she had promised him. And he did such a great job in terms of he's not in New York and he's not in L.A. I mean, when you're in L.A., you're surrounded by people in the arts. So it's almost like when you're not in those two hubs, you have to kind of fight for your artistic expression. Oh, I see him doing that all the time. You know? And he was so smart. One of the things he did was he got involved in the film production class at Townsend University, and all of those kids that were like seniors worked on this film, and then they got credit. And the experience that they got was unbelievable. And a lot of those kids today... I'm still friends with them. I see them on Facebook, and they're a lot of them are in the uh, movie industry or doing something, you know, in production. And really, they have Mike to thank for their first professional job on their resume. Yes. Well, you know, <clears throat> I, I I gotta say it was wonderful having Mike on as well. And uh, like I said, I'm still in touch with him on Facebook mm-hmm. as. <laughs> I am all the time ribbing him because he's always putting, I am watching, and he puts a movie, and I'm always putting the opposite thing, you know? (laughs) Well, you know, you guys, um, I mean, Mike knows horror films, and from what I understand about you, that is really your passion, and, you know, I'm simply a girl that did one horror film, and I don't know much about horror film. I think the horror film I saw before The Bone Garden was Play Misty for me, and it scared oh. the living jeebies out of me when I was a little girl. I, like, dug my fingers in my mom's arms, um, and that was probably the only horror film that I had seen as a little girl. It wasn't, um, they kind of scare me, and up until The Bone Garden, I had uh, I had never really um, read it's Clint Eastwood's first directing really movie. Seen anything for years. Yeah, that was Clint Eastwood's first movie yeah. he directed. Oh, my God, it was so scary. <laughs> yeah, I still remember that image of him asleep, and then uh, the woman brings a knife down. and uh, Jessica, Wal- Jessica Walter. Jessica Walter, yeah. 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 It's funny, she's doing a voice on, um, oh, Archer. <laughs> Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's what she's doing a voice on. But it's like Clint Eastwood wakes up and that knife goes into the pillow and yeah. he looks around and <laughs> Donna Mills and that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember that movie. And uh, But 
Yeah, Mike, I will I will do that with him all the time. And mm -hmm. I, I like horror films and I also like comedies and teen comedies because mm -hmm. I guess it's the kind of things that see my uncle owned a video store when I was young, so I was always there. So I get a ah, lot of memories. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. It's I find it hard to find I don't know that I should ask my my sons um, that are young adults um, the real the terminology because I did a another a feature film that is also on Amazon Prime that's called Grief I'm in Grief that is a beautiful beautiful film that I'm happy to tell you about it a little bit but you know you used to be able to say oh yeah I I did something I got a limited release and now you can buy it at the video store or rent it but now you say it's in digital distribution. I guess that's how you say it. And that could be anything. That could be Amazon Prime. That could be, you know, there's all sorts of different um, different areas it could be. And I'm not quite sure how, I'm never, I never know how to tell people how to find some of the work that I've done, some of the projects. Yeah. And the Bone Garden, like, like I said, I think it deserved uh uh, a better respectable release than it got. Like, I think it was better than the last Blair Witch Project, that's for sure, you know? Uh -huh. Or the last few paranormal activities. Like, Well, listen, he's really lucky that, I mean, he, it's amazing that not only did he write this and he made it, but then he saw it through, that it got, it got finished. I have, I personally have never been involved in a project that didn't get completed in post-production, but I have lots of friends that have, you know, uh, put time into acting in a project and then it never gets finished. It's like it dies in post-production, whatever. But not only did Mike, did the film get finished in post-production, but then he got this, you know, he, he got a distribution deal, which is to put it up um, on Amazon. So, um you know, bravo, and I'm sure that with each project he does, you you learn something. You know, you say, I want to repeat this, I want to work with the same people, I want to, I, I can do better, you know. So I know he's in post-production on a project called Shadows, mm -hmm. and then I know his he's hoping to do um, Wooden Floor after that, which, um, which he's got me uh, pinned on. Um, wood floors. Wooden floors, yeah. 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 I told him on, I think... Wood floors or wooden floors? And you know what, I'm going to have to go on my computer and, and look and see how he... Because it's been a while that I've been pinned on that. I told him, that. I said, come out of the shadows and start putting down the wood floors. <laughs> 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 That's the kind of stuff I do with him on Facebook all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm going to look right now on, on IMDb here to see <laughs> what and make sure we get the we get the name right. Um, yeah. Wood, let's see, wood floors. Yeah. yeah wood floors. It's been a while I had said to him, I'd love to be a part of this, so when well, he asked me. Yeah. Paul Cracked is supposed to be back in that as well. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 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 But I don't see any Tracy Savage. You know, there's not, uh, no, I don't think that there's, well, listen, Tracy, um, you know, Tracy left acting, and I don't think she misses it. I think she did, you know, she did um, The Bone Garden as a favorite of Mike, and it was such a great buddy-buddy film. Um, but Tracy is, doesn't, uh, you know, that was a different chapter in her life. Although I do believe if, if I do believe there could be a sequel personally to The Bone Garden. <laughs> Oh, I nice. think these two women could go on another adventure. Well, I'd um, like to see that because you two were uh, <laughs> very interesting together in this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It was, it was really interesting because I think the first day I worked, I'm trying to remember, on set might have been that intense scene that's at the end. Mm-hmm. Which we won't, you know, we won't give we won't anything spoil, away. Nope. But that was like kind of toward the beginning of my, and you know, I could, um, um, let's just say I didn't really know how to um, hold an axe. I don't want to give my part away either. I don't didn't really know how to. It was heavy, and I didn't really know how to swing it. I swung it like a girl. I had to get some lessons, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, it was really fun. Yeah, I enjoyed watching uh, you and Tracy walk uh, act opposite each other, getting uh, 
back back the acting thing. Uh, Tracy is going to be in Thirteen Fanboy, though. Um. Okay. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't the, know anything about that. The so. Friday the Thirteenth franchise is right now going through this whole lawsuit situation between the original director and the original screenwriter. I've had the Victor Miller on the show before. But uh, so they, that's why we haven't seen any new Friday the 13th movies. So mm. Debbie Sue Voorhees, who was in part five, she's been on my show uh, three times. And she's launching this uh, movie 13 Fanboy on Indiegogo where she's um, bringing together a lot of the alumni cast to the mm. film. She, Although she did get Dee Wallace, who was not in the franchise, but Dee Wallace is going to be the heroine of the film. She's brought in. Oh, she's fabulous! I have a lot of friends in LA that are friends with her. Well, yeah, I, she's I've, just so extraordinarily talented. She's just lovely. I've interviewed her and I've met her last year at Horrorama. So mm, she, yeah, uh-huh. but they got her. They got Corey Feldman, Tom Matthews, and, and a bunch of people. But they got Tracy Savage. And it's interesting because um, once I found out Tracy Savage was in this, that was where I pitched in to be co-producer. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, she talks. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, she, they talked about, she mentioned, Debbie Sue mentioned, you know, they got Corey Feldman, they got Kane Hodder. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I, I said to her, I said, you know how they say that you have me at hello? I told, I said to Debbie Sue, I said, you have me at Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm happy to be part of that project. Great, and, yeah. great, great. Well, I hope it's successful. Well, it's it's made the money it needed to make on Indiegogo, so. Oh, great. Yeah. What, what is the name of the project? 13 Fanboy. Okay, all right. Well, they were aiming for 50K, and right now, as I speak to you, it's got 62K, so. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to work, and I'm very proud to be part of that. But I have had friends um, in L.A., and I've been an actor in L.A. for over three decades. Um, and as I said, I've never pursued anything else. This is, this is all I've ever done. And I have friends who have done, you know, like a, a horror film or, you know, gotten a series, uh, done a couple seasons on soaps. And, boy, those, the fan base, you know, of particularly those two areas are are just so enormous i mean it's just unbelievable i think some of them have been just like shocked some of my friends throughout the years on what happens when they either do a horror film or they get get on a soap for a season or two you know in terms of um, the community of people that um those genres are important to them. You know, I think because the Bone Garden went straight, basically straight to online online renting it, distribution, I guess, um, that that wasn't my experience. You know, I think I would have had a different experience had it had a fuller release. I mean, it's I wish it a did. couple theaters. Yeah. But I think I would have had more of that sort of experience. Um, just going to know, uh, what were your memories of working with Paul Krakta and uh, Ron Milky? Well, I, you know, most of my scenes were Tracy and I. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, well, Paul and I had that intense scene at the end. Um, yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's a fitness buff. He's been a chiropractor for years. He left acting. And he, um, I don't know if he considers himself a doctor or, or an actor, but, um, or both. Um, he went on to a whole different career for 25 years Mm -hmm. um and i'm trying to think if i worked with but paul was really a really nice nice guy um i'm trying to think if i worked with i may have been on set one day with ron but i don't really i don't really think we interacted you know tracy and i were pretty it was, it was, there was, a, we worked pretty hard for, um, when you do an indie project versus, you know, a, a studio feature film, studio feature film, they may shoot, you know, four to six pages a day. If you work on an indie project, you know, they're trying to cram in, you know, they're trying to cram in maybe 10 to 15 pages a day on, on man camp. I, sh- I was in 10 scenes and shot those, we got those shot in, I think five, six days, and I'm in 40 pages of this, you know. So, uh, you know, on an indie project, because 
of the cost of renting equipment and stuff, they there's not as much time to chit chat. There's a different kind of heart though involved. You feel like you're a part of something really special. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're working very, very hard because they got to get through a lot of stuff. Well, you and Tracy did go come off like all oh, like sisters in the movie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, that's why I really think there could be a future movie, a buddy buddy movie for these two for these two broads. Yep. <laughs> well, I hope so. If Mike is hearing this, <laughs> and I think and I think and I think Tracy would do that. I I think if Mike ever ever wrote something, that Tracy would do that. Yeah. By the way, I have I've subscribed to your YouTube as well because I discovered ah. you have a YouTube. I'm good at YouTube, so <laughs> yeah, Great. yeah. I um I don't pay a, um an, a lot of attention to that. It's a great place for me to. I mean, most people could see a lot of my current stuff, um, and links on my personal website. Mm-hmm. Um, but on YouTube, the fun thing about YouTube is I had done all this. You know, I've done a lot of stuff in the 80s and 90s, and I wanted to have a place to kind of put those clips. And so it's kind of fun to put them there and know that they are somewhere where you know, my mom or my sister or my aunt and, you know, somebody could look at some some of my oldies but goodies yeah. sort of stuff. And what actors do on their personal websites that are used, you know, for agents and, and for, you know, uh, to send to producers and directors is you take off the old stuff. You just put current stuff. So the YouTube is great because I can just put everything on there. There you um, go. It's kind of like this is a combination of, of of the work I've done throughout the years. Well, we love the Bone Garden. I, Thank I think I you. yeah. I think people should definitely check it out. And, Thank uh, you. And it's so sweet of you to call attention to it. I mean, really. And as I said, your interview with Mike and your interview with Tracy was really lovely. Well, well, now we've got to switch gears and lighten her up with a little man camp. Is that man like a play? Camp, right. Is that right. like a play on the American Pie band camp? <laughs> well, definitely is a boys' testosterone-driven movie. <laughs> so can, can I, should I take a moment and tell you a little bit about it? I want to hear about it. Okay. Because, yeah. So um, there's a mom who was widowed 10 years before, mm-hmm. and she raised three boys, and these boys are now in their 20s, and the youngest one is very um, spacey and odd. That's played by Eric Stocklin, who has an amazing following. He's on, he does lots of TV and has unbelievable uh, following. And the middle kid is played, who is kind of the naughty boy, who's the one in, in high school, always got in trouble. That's played by Scott Cruz. And then the down-to-earth older son is played by Dan Cummings. And um, so every year on the dad, the anniversary of the dad's death, the three brothers get together, and they go to the family cabin, and they toast to their father, and they have a weekend of remembering their dad and being silly and having a bros weekend, literally a brother's weekend. And so they, they set out, the movie opens, and they set out to go to the family cabin, and they walk in, and Mom is almost naked on a bearskin rug with a satin sheet pulled up over her with boyfriend ready to have some – they're ready to have a little romantic uh, romantic time. And they don't even know Mom's dating, let alone having a boyfriend. And the boyfriend's played by P- the wonderful Pete Gardner. Mm-hmm. And they're shocked. It's a very funny scene. And it was – funny scene you know it was fun for me to do and then um so they talk me into going home and they say let let boyfriend hang out let's see how well he fits in with the family and then havoc so i go back home and havoc ensues (laughs) of craziness they really create a lot of problems falls out of a tree falls off a mountain you know lots of wacky stuff like really boys boys a lot of testosterone sort of stuff and the boys make up a story that uh, causes me to break up with boyfriend. And then they decide that they find out that he's really a fabulous guy, really a fabulous guy. And there's a wedding at the end. Um, so there you have it. And um, it was shot. I was ecstatic. I said to them, where are you shooting this? And they sit in Colorado, and not only was it shot 30 minutes away from where our, one of our sons lives in Boulder, 
both of our L.A. raised sons live in Colorado because husband is also from Colorado. We're childhood sweethearts. Mm -hmm. And um, they, the kids, our boys, have spent their entire life going back to Colorado to visit family. And Colorado is an amazing state, so both of our kids <laughs> live in Colorado. But um, the... Uh, cabin was about 30 minutes outside of Boulder, which is where one of our sons lives. So it was really great because I got to shoot a film in my home state and see my family. And that was such a full circle moment since I grew up doing theater in Denver. Now, is this movie going to get a wide release? You know, I will. I know that they are working on that now, but because of Pete and because of Eric, there is a good chance that it's going to get um, a nice distribution. Eric yeah. and Pete have a huge both both of them have a huge following. You see, because so Pete Pete has not only done Crazy Ex Girlfriend, he's a stand up comedian. He's done TV and commercials for years. Eric, who plays my younger son, just he has literally millions of social media followers. It's unbelievable. I don't know how he did that. Um, it's kind of a mystery, the social media thing to me, but. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets a lovely distribution deal. Yeah, because um, I'm one of these people that still likes to go to the movies. I, <laughs> but I find that there's a lot of stuff. Like Bone Garden did not get like a, a, a wide theatrical release. And I find that people yeah. are missing out on stuff like this. Because I'm sorry, but I have not seen Aquaman. I have not seen Bumblebee. A lot of these big blockbusters, I mean, they could be good for all I know, but they don't appeal to me because mm -hmm. they're just in your face constantly, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. turns me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I don't know about the horror films. My husband and I prefer to go see movies at the art theaters. Mm -hmm. There's one in Denver, but there's um, in Los Angeles, there's a small chain that's called the Lemley, Lemley Theaters. It's owned by the Lemley family, mm -hmm. and they have these glorious, gorgeous indie art films or foreign films. And this weekend we saw two of them. We went and saw two movies, and I uh, we saw this wonderful documentary that's called uh, Tuba to Cuba. Okay. And um, you have to be kind of a jazz. If you like jazz, it's the movie for you. It's a documentary. But I thought after it leaves the Lemley, what happens to it? It's this beautiful movie that music lovers all around the world should watch, you know, and I thought, what happens to these yeah. the small, you know, they've gotten a chance to run at the Lemley Theaters and some of the art houses, but, you know, a lot of passion, time, money went into making these, and what happens to them? You used to be able to rent them at video stores afterwards, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know where they go. You hope that Netflix, will t like, I wonder, yeah. Bone, Bone Garden, will Netflix pick that up? Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. Now, from an actor point of view, you know, a lot of these places, Netflix and Amazon and stuff like that, there is there is a catch-22, I would say, which is it's wonderful that these films have a bigger life and people see them. And that's, and that's so important. From an actor point of view, um, our union hasn't quite caught up in – knowing what to do and how to um, continue um, uh, paying the actors that are on these movies that um, you used to actors. I still get, for instance, in the 80s, I'm in the Hollywood Shuffle. It's really the first original indie film ever made. Robert Townsend stars Oh, in my it. goodness. That's interesting you just mentioned that because I just uh, – just, um this past Saturday, I interviewed um, Eugene Robert Glazer, who's in that. I would ha I shot it so long ago. I remember working with the Wayan Brothers and Robert. I would have to look in up and see who that was. Well, he was in the, the TV show La Femme Nikita with Peter Wilson. Okay. Yeah, okay. and he was in the Joy of Sex, uh, the 1984 sex comedy. Oh, but okay, great. We talked about Hollywood Shuffles, though. It's so kind of interesting you bring that yeah, up. The funny thing is I still get residual chucks. I shot that in the 80s. It was an indie film. We initially first worked free, and about a year and a half later, Samuel Goldwyn Jr. picked up the project. We, I was called in. I got a phone call, went in and signed contracts, got paid for my time because it was a deferred payment initially, and I still to this day get residual checks. And the problem 
is or SAG hasn't evolved. We haven't evolved yet so that when things are on Netflix and when things are on Amazon, we um, we don't we don't get our resi- we don't get the residual checks. We don't we don't continue getting what we should as actors. And yet I'm so thrilled that these projects continue to have a life when they are on um, those platforms. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. Yeah. Well, no, uh, Man Camp sounds funny, and I love the title, Man Camp. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's and that's a perfect title for it. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, and for me, most of the people, most of the, the guys, so the four guys, Pete and the guys who played my three sons, their characters were really what they were, you know, whether they were wacky or serious or whatever. I, I was really blessed because my character, I got to do comedy, I got to do drama, I got to do a, you know, as a middle-aged woman, I got to do a, a, a sexy scene with Pete, and so... Um, <laughs> You know, that was, it was like such a gift that I got to have something and have the character have so much diversity. Yes. So, uh, and uh, you go be in wood floors. You're not involved with shadows, huh? No, no. We talked about it. We talked about it. And it was, first of all, Mike shot, um, he had sent me the script a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, I just kind of gave him some notes on it, just some acting notes on it. He had sent it to me for, you know, because we've now developed such a great friendship um, throughout the years. And um, But he made that, like, every weekend for, like, a month and a half. And so he used local actors, and I'm in L.A., mm-hmm. um, and he's in, he's in Baltimore. Um, so, uh, no, he's hired um, local actors, and I... He might have gone because I'm not sure what his budget was, but he actually might have hired some really talented non-union um, actors. I'm, I'm union. So um, I think that was the best thing for him and the mm-hmm. best way for him to get his movie made. And I've read other scripts of his that he wants to make. I mean, he's really, he's really quite uh, prolific in his writing and his ability to write wonderful female roles. Well, he loves uh, uh, horror films because I, yeah. I forgot looking at your uh, IMDb, you play Laurie Curtis, Laurie mm-hmm. Strode slash Jamie Lee Curtis, Halloween. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I play the Tracy plays kind of the meek uh, for for your audience um, that hasn't seen it yet, and hopefully hopefully they will. Um, Tracy plays kind of a meek, abused. Uh, her husband isn't so nice to her, and I'm her good time party girlfriend who drives up in a red convertible that I got uh, I call it my hunk mobile that I got in uh, in my art my divorce and so we have we have this yin yang of a female type Um, but what you find toward the end is what you see is not really the reality of who these are yeah no I I, um, look forward to man camp and uh, it sounds to me like a funny movie that. Oh, it is. And then another one, if I could just mention real quick, sure, please. is um, because it's on the same platform, is, um, you could rent it on Amazon Prime, is Grief. Beautiful, beautiful, serious movie. It's a father who, whose child dies in a car accident that he feels responsible for, and his marriage has ended over the stress of grieving for this child. Mm-hmm. And the house, the the his ex-wife has moved on. It's been a, it's been a couple of years, and she has moved on. And they they're putting this house finally on the market, and the the divorce is over. And he goes back to the house to commit suicide. He cannot um, he cannot get over his son's death and feeling responsible. And I'm the realtor that walks in at a very precarious moment, very serious precarious moment. Um, to show the house to potential buyers, and um, it's kind of a funny, dramatic scene um, with uh, um, with Kevin, who wrote it and and uh, stars in it, and um, he's unbelievably talented, <laughs> unbelievably talented. So that's called Grief, and that's a feature film that's also on digital awesome. uh, on Amazon. Do you have any? Uh, you have a web page you want to promote on here? 
Well, I have uh, people could see um, for on YouTube, and mm-hmm. they could also go to TammyCates.com. Um, and I try to keep, uh, you know, I try to put up current, I just shot some new acting pictures. I'll be swiping out some pictures there. And I try to put, um, at least on my resume, I try to keep that. I keep my oldies on there. But I put my current reels up um, when I get them edited or when, when I get a copy of, of the this- the stuff when the producers have sent me um, my scenes, um, so they could. I try to. I try to put the same stuff on YouTube, um, but those two places would be um, good places to kind of check it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I know you're on Facebook. You mind if I add you on Facebook? Oh, okay, that'd be great. That'd sure, be great. I've got Mike and on also, there. Also, for your audience, just you know, to kind of get to know me a little bit. Yeah. Um, um, uh, my family, we have been extraordinarily involved in uh, cancer, um, uh, kid cancer. Our, our now uh, adult son, when he was 14, he had stage 3 cancer, and mm-hmm. it, truly was, it truly was a thing that, you know, I stopped, my career stopped for a brief time during the two times I was pregnant, but this totally rocked our world. He, uh, he had a mass the size of a cantaloupe sitting on his heart, pressing on his right lung, Oh. And he went through uh, chemo and, and open chest surgery and more chemo. And today he's totally healthy. But uh, because of that, it took me a couple years to – his cancer journey was only six, six months, but it took me a couple years to really get over it. It was such a traumatic um, thing to go through. And it wasn't until someone just offered me the part of uh, something on stage. And when I set – my foot on stage when I started rehearsing, I felt like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz Mm -hmm. that all of a sudden I saw color again. Like I was 24 seven breathing kid cancer and what I had seen, which was just so my son was one of the few kids that when we lived at the hospital that survived. Um, and, um, it was so devastating that I was still two years later, 24-7 24-7 thinking about kid cancer. And I stepped on stage, and all of a sudden, like, I was like, oh, my God, the seats are red in this theater, and look at the scenery, and oh, my God, I'm wearing a blue outfit, you know, whatever. What, but it's like it gave me my art, gave me back my life. Um, but I went on to be president of a board at Children's Hospital for four years uh, for a, a teen group that helped support supported teenagers that were battling cancer because teens are kind of the forgotten group. Not only are kids kind of a forgotten group, uh, kid cancer is the least funded of any cancer, but teens, um, they're going through puberty at the time they're dealing with this. So like they're already on a path in terms of their life. If a little tiny kid gets cancer, their life isn't so, and they survive, their life isn't so shooken up because they weren't really on that they hadn't had a decade of living life yet, you know, but um, but so we're really, as a family, very very proud of the money we raised and hopefully um, contributed to helping other families dealing with kid cancer. Well, yeah, that was the next question I was going to ask you if you were involved in any charities and uh... yeah, that's kind of my that's kind of our thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, as I. As I mentioned, um, really, people don't get that kid cancer, of all different kinds of kid cancers, is the least funded of any cancer out there. Um, And it's alarming how many kids every minute are diagnosed and how many kids every minute pass away around the world from kid cancer. So uh, that's kind of my thing. I'm not involved with that charity anymore, but I'm always volunteering. I'm always looking for groups that have to do with supporting kid cancer and I volunteer for you know if they're if they're doing a fundraiser I'll volunteer to you know do whatever they need so um yeah you I I, just a quick aside you had mentioned Robin so when I was um uh you know so I was I wouldn't say I was a big deal in Denver but I was very active young in theater and it's not like there was much going on but they had to shoot a couple episodes every season of Mork and Mindy in Mm -hmm. Boulder and I actually was the only local hire Um, I auditioned and I got to 
it was so long ago, I don't even remember what it was, but I, but I had a couple of lines. I actually I got uh, my SAG card on working on a Mork and Mindy episode years ago mm-hmm. that, was, that shot in Boulder. And then it was directed by Gary Marshall, that particular episode. And years later, I went on to start a play uh, at a small theater in L.A., and Kathleen Marshall, um, Gary's daughter, had the second female lead. I had the lead. And they fired the producers, fired the director that was not doing a very good job, like three weeks halfway into rehearsal. And Gary stepped in and ghost directed um, the the play. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of this full circle moment on that because I had gotten, I had worked with Gary as a little, as a young girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, worked with him. You know, I simply had a couple lines in one of the episodes. Um, But for one of the more committee episodes that they shot in Boulder, Colorado. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, you, we we promoted uh, kids cancer. Is there a particular web page you want to throw out for kids cancer? You know, the organization and the charity that I was involved in at Children's Hospital, they redid some things at Children's Hospital, and that is uh, my particular uh, the particular nonprofit that I was president of for four years is no longer involved. But there's there's just so many. There's a number of really great um, kid cancer organizations. Cure. Uh, oh my gosh, you're putting me on the spot now. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of the correct to how they. Uh, you know what? I would have to pull up. I know St. Baldrick's does a lot of great things. Um, there's one that starts with the name Cure. There's a couple of. There's a couple of ones that are really fabulous for raising money for uh, kid cancer. Alex's Lemonade, as I said, St. Baldrick's. Uh, Dang, this one that's in the back of my head that starts with Cure. I cannot think of the full name of it. Um, So I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to actually. um, But people could peruse online and find some great kid cancer organizations. And and, and, And if they donate a lot to cancer organizations, I encourage them to look specifically for some kid cancer organizations and see if they can help out with those as well. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad your son um, survived this, you know. Yes. And, he's t- and he's totally healthy. He's totally, he's a strong and healthy young man. He, he actually lives in Denver now. He moved to Denver a couple years ago. Um, so I've I'm going to see them in about a week and a half. I can't wait. Awesome. Um, I'm going to head out, out there so I can have some mom time with my boys. Um, but, yeah, he is. We are we are very, very l- lucky because had he been diagnosed, he was 14 when he was diagnosed. Mm-hmm. Had he been diagnosed as a baby, they might not have had the right cocktail. But when he was diagnosed, they knew exactly what to do with his kind of cancer. So medical science is evolving so wonderfully and quickly that what was a killer a decade ago is not necessarily a killer today. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to we have to trust that medical science and put money into research and support medical science. Well, you know what? That is fantastic. And again, folks, check out the Bone Garden. It's the five-year anniversary. Can, can you believe it's been five years? I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, and we wish Mike Guthridge the best of luck in his projects. I hope that he uh, continues to show his passion, you know, and, and, and uh of course, he's got shadows coming out. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I believe it's a short film, and he's got, of course, wood floors, which we're going to get to see Tammy in again. That's right. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that's it. that will be the next thing that he uh, pulls it together and shoots. Yeah, I'm ready. Mm. I am totally ready. Yeah, and I'll definitely have him on to promote that because, well, he helped me get my interview with Tracy, so I, I'm kind of in, <laughs> I'm kind of indebted to him. <laughs> Well, I meant, and I mentioned to Tracy when she was over here last week at the party, I mentioned that we were going to chat. And she said, oh, I had such a nice chat with, 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 with Greg. And I, and I said, I know I listened to it. It was a good one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I tried to send it to her, but I know I'd lost her email address. But, so I, I just sent it to the one on uh, her webpage. But 
Uh, right now, hers is unlisted, so uh, it hasn't gone public yet. It's going to go public uh, soon, though. But now, I think I did send it to both of them. Oh, I perfect. I think I sent Tracy's to, because I asked Mike if he had a copy, and Mike didn't, and then you sent me Tracy's, and I think I sent it to both Mike and Tracy. I, I'll double check when, when okay. you and I initially touched base a couple weeks ago. Um, I'll, I'll double check and see, and if I and and if I didn't, I will I will send it to Tracy. Okay, yeah, hers is going to come out public. Uh, I think in a couple months, but mm-hmm. I like to send them out unlisted because that way I can take my time with the public release. Because I like to release them in right. order, but that way people don't have to wait so long to get to hear it, and you can post it. Great. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with you guys posting it before I, I post it. You know, I'm Terrific. fine with that. Yeah. Ter- do people post it on Facebook? Do they? Oh yeah, I right. just had an actress post hers, and it's not mm-hmm. public yet, and mm-hmm. but it's already got 78 views uh, like in a day, and I'm like, you know, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I look forward to also sending you um, some production photos of some of the projects we were talking about. Yes, so absolutely. And of course, uh, we look forward to Man Camp. Sounds man. like a manly film. <laughs> a manly man film. <laughs> a man I, camp. I, I, I refer to myself as the, the estrogen needed portion on the on set and in the script. <laughs> so you go have like Allison Hannigan, American Pie lines, where you go, I, I remember last year at Man Camp. <laughs> 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 no, no. <laughs> Those aren't my lines, but no. <laughs> but it definitely is, like, my, my boys will really get a kick out of the movie. It's definitely a boy sort of, it's a summer romp comedy. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know what, Tammy, I thank you so much for coming on here today. Oh, and thank you for asking. I was so flattered to to uh, to hear from you, and and I was just tickled pink. So I, I thank you for reaching out to me. Well, I would have had you on uh, long before this, but I've had swamped with uh, other things to do, and I had other guests that I was scheduling, and, and what happened here is that I, it hit me that Bone Garden celebrating its five-year anniversary. And I don't know who else is going to celebrate its anniversary because it's like it's one of those little independent films. Yeah. And I thought, you know, Mike Guttridge would appreciate this. So. Oh, how fun. And how fun that I got to. And thank you for allowing me to um, share about my other projects. You know, my commercials, I, I, I do a lot of commercials, too. They're up on, some of them are up on YouTube. And, you know, I, it's fun to be able to share some of the other wonderful projects grief and a project called duke is just gorgeous Mm -hmm. that's doing really well film circuit um right now but it's wonderful to not only relive and talk about man uh, bone garden but to be able to also um, update you about my current current projects well i'll tell you what uh when those projects get their release you know feel free to come back on you know i'm be more than happy to have you back great great yes um Absolutely, that's that sounds lovely. And and if any of my projects you um, see somebody in, if you take a peek at them and you see someone you would like to meet, just let me know and I'll I'll see what I can do to to facilitate that. Oh, perfect! Before I let you go, I was wondering if I could get you do a plug for my show. Absolutely, tell me what to do. <laughs> just state your name and say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise out of New Brunswick, Canada. So this is Tammy Cates, and I am listening to Greg Gilbert, Python Paradise in New New Brunswick, Canada. You ever been up this way before? I have not. We want to come up to Canada and see the Northern Lights. We actually have been talking about that. Oh, wow. Do you see them from where you're at? I never even gave them a second thought. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I'm too busy seeing my cat every day. <laughs> That's my northern lights. <laughs> now, Greg, you go out there. You go outside on a cold night and go see, look in the sky and see if you can see the beautiful northern Are lights. you kidding me? On a cold night, I'm going to be in snuggling with my cat <laughs> where it's warm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank. Oh, that's what makes the world go around, you know. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you so much, Tammy, and thank uh, you. Uh, I look forward to seeing Man Camp, and uh, I just want to say God bless, and um, thank you so much.
Thank you. Um, and we will be in touch. Absolutely. Absolutely. You take care. All right.